Well, those strings, those fine strings that you see in the background, I think this could indeed be DNA. My DNA, I extracted it and in this video I want to show you how I've done that, how I've put it under the light microscope and why you're able to see it even though actually one should not be able to see DNA under light microscope. It's way too small and too thin and way below the limit of what light microscopes are able to resolve. But still, we're able to see those strings. Well, I have a hypothesis why this is the case. Stay tuned and let's get started. So hi, Microbe Hunter here. Well, this is a special request video because one of my viewers asked me, can you put, put some human DNA, human DNA under the microscope? under the microscope here. And my first response was, what? You cannot do that. Because a human DNA is way too small and you're not gonna see anything. So I'm gonna show you now in this video how I'm going to extract human DNA, my own DNA, and I'm gonna put it under the microscope. Then later on at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a way how you can actually see massive DNA, a lot of DNA, without the use of a microscope at all. Okay, so if you wanna look at your own DNA with or without microscope, you need the following ingredients. Table salt, a little bit of water. This is rubbing alcohol, it's ethyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol probably would also work. And simply some uh, dishwashing detergent soap, um, maybe a tube um, and a wooden stick. Uh, wood is always good because wood is good, <laughs> uh, because um, wood is rough and therefore the DNA is able to stick better on, on the wood, okay? Yeah, so let's uh, get started. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix the salt uh, with uh, the water here, okay? So that's, uh, that's it. Um, you just stir until it dissolves. And what the salt does is the following. The salt um, actually dissolves the DNA better because the DNA is very polar and salt water is also very polar. So uh, yeah, it's gonna work quite well. It goes, uh, the DNA will go into solution very well. And the next part is the fun part. Um, you, you wonder where am I gonna get the DNA from? I'm going to use my own cheek cells. And so I'm gonna take a small sip here and I'm going to mm, for a, a minute. It, okay, so we're gonna do that now. Cheers. Mm. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was very salty. <laughs> okay. Plenty of uh, my cells are now in here and you can see that something's going on here because it's not clear anymore. Um, yeah, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to break the cells open and how to get the DNA out. Okay, and then you add a small drop of dishwashing solution and you carefully stir, you carefully stir without causing too much foam. And uh, this uh, dishwashing solution is going to break open the cells and uh, going to release the DNA. So I'm just gonna yeah, carefully stir this uh, properly. Yeah, and so while I wait uh, for the soap uh, to do its work and to break open the cells to release the DNA, I want to show you another project that I just started recently. I call it MicroWorld Archive, microworldarchive.org. And it's a large uh, picture collection. It's not, lot, not that large yet, uh, but I hope uh, that it's gonna grow very quickly. Um, and I hope uh, to grow it into one of the largest uh, micrograph collections online that is uh, available. And uh, I I want also that the pictures uh, that are available, uh, that you can see that, that they are also free to be used under the Creative Commons license. And uh, I would like to also use this time now to ask for your financial support because I want to buy a new microscope that helps me in taking um, very, very good pictures. But the problem is, is that this microscope is very expensive, uh, way uh, beyond that of what I could afford. Um, and if uh, you are able and willing to support me, I would be very happy and I would return uh, to the community uh, in that way in that I'm going to also publish pictures online that I made with a microscope uh, and the people out there even you can use them for whatever projects you want to use them so and now back uh, to my DNA here um, yeah so yeah you see some stuff floating around here I don't know is this some some lunch from from I don't know what 
some some jelly like stuff in here yeah uh, that's kind of disgusting i admit but uh what we are gonna do now is, is now we've got the dna floating around freely um in um, the solution here and it's uh dissolved uh, because it's in salt water and what i have to do now is, is i have to precipitate the dna and what does this mean uh, precipitate means is i'm gonna carefully pour um, some alcohol over the solution here and uh, this means that uh, on the top here there's going to be a layer of alcohol and on the bottom there's going to be the yeah the salt water with the dna and in between where the alcohol touches the salt water this is hopefully the place where i can find the dna and later on i'm going to show you how to do this with a lot of dna so that i'm going to show you really a lot okay so let's uh, do this carefully i'm going to now take uh, the alcohol and i'm going to carefully pour it over now it's uh, easier to pour it from from a glass container here yeah and now let's carefully pour the alcohol over the dna solution a little bit of losing a little bit here you can see how it starts to layer itself on top and we can already see something here you see this stuff here a little bit of foam here and some air bubbles but when we take now the wooden stick carefully go down here you can see that there is this string like consistency that we have you see it looks a little bit like strings what is that it's my dna haha <laughs> yes see i can actually wrap it around the stick here carefully i'm always go into the alcohol then you go down again into the liquid and you pull out some into the alcohol uh, so you can see already there's this string like consistency here yeah here we go here we go do you see this yeah here we go um that's of course not only one dna molecule but probably billions of them or millions at least so now let's uh, put it on here uh, doesn't want to get off it's a little bit yeah let's try to brush it off here okay and of course cover glass goes on top and everything goes under the microscope and let's put it in here and let's see what i see i see bubbles as expected oops what is this aha uh -huh. well sometimes even if you do not see the dna itself maybe you still can kind of deduce where it could be i'm gonna show you what i see now well the first thing that i saw when i put it under the microscope was a blob a very undefined mass of cells and strings probably dna um, and i looked around a little bit and then all of a sudden i did see those very fine stringy like structures uh, that i suppose could be a uh, dna um, and uh, i looked around a little bit more and then i found it also in a different place again but generally those uh, structures structures were kind of difficult to find because uh, it stuck together so it was rather difficult to discern because there was such a big mass and also a lot of cells were um, incorporated there so very difficult uh, to actually discern those uh, fine uh, networks uh, and those fine fibers again i'm not a hundred percent sure that there are dna but i suppose that it is now why are we able to see them if it is DNA in the first place. Well, first of all, I do not think uh, that the, those strings are individual DNA molecules because they would be way too small. But I think that rather they could be bundles of DNA, uh, DNA st uh, stuck together. And uh, if you look very carefully, then you're gonna see that uh, it's not completely smooth, but sometimes you can see those little dots on the fiber. And I think that these could be denatured and coagulated proteins by the alcohol. That's uh, my hypothesis. And uh, because they are sticking on the dna um, that's why it becomes much thicker and much easier to see so that is uh, my hypothesis why i think uh, that we're able to even see those fibers in the first place now whether it is dna or not i think uh, we have, one has to do some kind of a staining uh, technique or to uh, use other methods uh, to figure this out in any case i consider it quite fascinating that we're even able to see these things in the first place um, and what i have done is i've of course also used my face contrast 
contrast microscope and then of course the image quality looked even better than in bright field because uh, face contrast is especially good for very fine and detailed structures that are very thin just like in this case for example well I do have a few recommendations as well. Um, please, uh, when you try to do this experiment yourself, uh, I found out that it's not a good idea to shake uh, the tube uh, with your DNA a lot. That's what I have tried to, to do to break open the cells better, but then I was not able to get any DNA out in the first place at all. Why? Because the DNA probably broke up because it was so sensitive. So carefully mix uh, the soap uh, with uh, your solution that uh, with your mouth rings, so to say, to break open the cells but don't agitate it too much and another um, advice that I can give you is, is, is that you do not use a stick like I have done but that you wait that the DNA rises up through the alcohol um, and then you can actually pick up uh, the DNA uh, from the top using some tweezers but once you pick it up and uh, take it out it sticks together and then again it becomes very difficult to separate them so those parallel fibers that you see right now what you have to do is you kind of have to separate them with your tweezers um, yeah in a 90 degree perpendicular to the pa path of the fibers kind of got to separate it like this and then um, it becomes easier to see the strings but this uh, takes uh, quite a bit of patience and I have to admit I repeated uh, the experiment several times uh, in order to get uh, these results here in any case I think it's uh, quite fascinating but I promised you uh, a lot of DNA as well and if you really want to increase the quantity of DNA then I recommend that you briefly blend a few bananas or some banana pieces uh, with a lot of water uh, only blend it for a short time because you do not want to uh, chop up the DNA too much uh, as well only enough to break open the cells a little bit and then essentially it's the same procedure as before um, you have to filter it uh, and then when you pour alcohol Alcohol over it you can precipitate the DNA again and the amount of DNA that you get is a lot now if you put that under the microscope you're also gonna see a lot of, uh, of banana starch grains and other cell material so actually um, it is not pure DNA either it's a lot of DNA but not pure DNA either because there's so many other uh, cellular components uh, also involved here that are sticking to the DNA so what you have to do actually is, is you have to dissolve the DNA again in water in salt to water and to, to remove all of those proteins again and then you have to precipitate it again in alcohol and uh, by including a washing step like this uh, you're actually able to get uh, much better results well and at the very end I'm going to show you again a few pictures uh, later on but now it is your turn why don't you try uh, to uh, also extract your own DNA and uh, then send me some pictures and I will include it in an upcoming video as well um, I think uh, it's a very easy and straightforward experiment but uh, I think uh, it still can be optimized a little bit especially one of the things that I think has to be improved is, is when you take out the DNA either with tweezers or with a wooden stick then it tends to stick together and once it's sticking together um, it's really difficult to separate and you're not able to see the individual you know, fibers anymore I just call them fibers because um, yeah, I, assume, I assume it's DNA uh, but uh, um, I don't know for sure and I think uh, one should uh, do a little bit more of an investigation but the first thing um, that uh, one should always do is, is, is to repeat the experiment and that's why I would like to ask you try to repeat the experiment uh, try to also maybe extract banana DNA by including a washing step in between um, and send me the pictures uh, if uh, you want to and then I can uh, include them as well in an upcoming video well I think that's definitely enough for today. Um, hope it was interesting. In any case, uh, I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye bye.